everybody. So I'm, my name is Stephen Hong. I'm from uh, Kleiner Perkins. Uh, I'm a partner there investing in hardware technologies. And today I'm just going to give a quick talk, a little bit about the trends that we're seeing in Silicon Valley, specifically as it relates to hardware. And uh, just a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I'm actually fairly new to Kleiner Perkins. I joined about four or five months ago. Uh, prior to Kleiner Perkins, I, uh, I did my PhD at Stanford a couple years ago and started two different companies. And so, um, you know, at Kleiner Perkins, we really believe that, uh, you know, before you become an investor, you have to be an operator and an entrepreneur to really understand what the entrepreneurs are going through. And so, uh, really excited to be on the other side of the table now, investing in hardware technologies, and excited to tell you guys a little bit about what we're investing in. <clears throat> so, just a little bit about Kleiner Perkins. Uh, the firm's been around for, for more than 40 years, uh, invested in, uh, you know, some of the premier companies like Google, Amazon, uh, Netscape, Nest, and uh, the way we look at entrepreneurship is it's really about job creation, it's about opportunity creation. And um, when we think about what companies we're investing in, we try to invest in companies that have lasting, sustaining power. And so if you just think about the type of companies that are on that list right there, these are all companies that have impacted and changed the world in dramatic ways. And so when we look at what companies we want to fund, we're looking for you know, not only ideas and applications that have short-term impact, we're looking for long-term sustaining impact that will really change the world. <clears throat> So we invest in companies at all different stages. Uh, our, our sweet spot is Series A, kind of five to $10 million checks. Um, but we do earlier stage seed investments, uh, incubations, as well as growth investments that are for companies that are about to scale. And um, in, in this whole spectrum, if you look at kind of where the companies are, companies need different things at different stages. And so uh, the firm is set up in such a way that we're able to support companies, even incubated inside the, inside the firm, to companies that are you know billion dollar companies that need expertise and growth scaling across the world. Uh, our approach really, I think, is different. Uh, having, having been an entrepreneur myself um, and having had a lot of uh, you know, top tier investors, I, I would actually say that uh, Kleiner Perkins is, is actually much more hands on than even the traditional you know, kind of tier one investors. Uh, we, we really thrive in you know, rolling up our sleeves and, and, and you know, getting into the details and helping the entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, we're, we're, the, we're the biggest supporters and the biggest cheerleaders uh, for our companies. Um, but not only that, we, we truly believe in you know, building this company alongside with all the entrepreneurs that we back. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of investments that we make. Uh, primarily in the fund, we have three main sectors. We have uh, digital, that includes both enterprise and uh, consumer software. Uh, we have hardware technology, which is the group that I invest out of. And we have Life Science Group that invests in uh, pretty much digital health and medical devices and vaccines. And so the hard tech group that we invest in, um, it's pretty much anything physically manufacturable. We invest in you know, anything from autonomous vehicles to uh, uh, the building blocks for low power systems to uh, industrial and consumer IoT. <clears throat> and when we think about where we want to invest, One of the things that we always think about is envisioning the world not just as it is today, but what it's going to look like tomorrow. Um, when we looked at a lot of the consumer IoT companies many years ago, what we saw was that there was this convergence of cheap compute, uh, unlimited bandwidth, um, driving a lot of these smart interconnected devices. And so uh, some of the investments that we've made include Nest and include Ring. Uh, essentially bringing intelligence all over your home such that you can have the ability to, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to control everything uh, at, the, at the center of your fingertips. <clears throat> when we look at how IoT is shifting across the consumer sector into the industrial space, we see very similar opportunities happening there as well. Uh, the, the ubiquitous sensing, low power compute, uh, unlimited bandwidth is allowing you to essentially create uh, new models and, and new customer experiences it's allowing you to build new business models, and it's allowing you to do predictive maintenance and get, a, get ahead of the problems before they actually get there as well. <clears throat> and so in the industrial IoT space, we see a lot of opportunity. And one of the things that we see in the industrial space is that rather than there being a single horizontal platform, we think that it's going to break by vertical. So different verticals will have different, very specific solutions. And uh, that's actually something that we're very bullish on right now. 
One of the other areas that we're really interested in right now is additive manufacturing. Uh, additive manufacturing, I think, um, you know, when it first started out was all about the consumer. It was about 3D printing your next widget. Uh, but what we've seen really is that 3D printing was never at the uh, cost, the scalability, the speed that the consumers really expected. Um, and so what we've seen is that most of the consumer applications for 3D printing never really took off. And where 3D printing really took off was in the enterprise. And so uh, today, a lot of the opportunities that we see in 3D printing are centered around helping companies manufacture faster, prototype faster. Um, and as the 3D printing technology becomes more and more mature, uh, we're seeing a lot of these prototyping systems move into production as well. And uh, one of the companies we're really excited about is, is a company that we made an investment in about 18 months ago. It's a company called Desktop Metal. Um, traditionally, uh, metal 3D printing has been very complicated, very cumbersome. Um, Desktop Metal is making it so that, uh, you know, just like the, 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 the old uh, mainframe computers were very large and cumbersome, but they shrunk and were able to fit in your desktop, uh, Desktop Metal has taken the traditional 3D metal printing systems, which are very cumbersome, expensive, and require enclosed rooms, and they're allowing people to uh, essentially have these portable 3D metal printing devices, and this really democratizes and changes the supply chain and the way people print 3D parts. Um, and so for all these companies, they all start as very simple ideas, and, and a lot of times they start as ideas that are not even fully formed. And so um, through, Desktop Metal is a great example of this. When, when we made this investment you know, 18, 20 months ago, um, when they, uh, when they first came to pitch us, it was nothing but PowerPoint slides. And so uh, when I mentioned kind of the, the, the multiple stages that we invested across, this was a very, very early stage investment. Um, but uh, one of the things that we saw was not only did this technology have the opportunity to, to really change the world from a manufacturing, from a, from a supply chain, from a logistics footprint point of view, the founders were all people that we truly believed were in this for the long run and could truly execute on this vision. And so uh, this is, I think, one of the, one of the companies that we're, we're really proud of, you know, that's been able to take something from very, very early concept idea into something that's uh, in production. They're about to launch their uh, studio system within the next couple of months. And uh, you know, really, I think, when, when 3D metal printing becomes uh, ubiquitous, it'll really change the way supply chain, the way logistics, the way manufacturing is done. Uh, with these uh, ability to manufacture uh, uh, high precision, high quality parts on site. One of the other things that we think about is, uh, you know, how these autonomous systems will reshape the cities as well. And um, when we think about autonomous systems, we think about, you know, pretty much anything that drives, anything that flies, anything that moves. And uh, one of the investments that we've made that we're most proud of as well is a company called DJI based out of uh, Shenzhen, China. Uh, DJI uh, today is one of the largest drone companies in the world um, and uh, truly are, they're reshaping the way you know, autonomous air vehicles are being built. Um, but, uh, but they're starting not as autonomous air vehicles, they're starting as kind of prosumer devices. And so um, be between today and tomorrow, there's always an evolution. And so one of the things we really look for are companies that have the path and the uh, plan to be able to execute across you know, multiple iterations of the business and multiple stages of the company to, to truly be able to realize that vision. And DJI is a great example of a company that we think will one day you know, provide autonomous systems, autonomous drones uh, for a variety of these applications that will transform our city. Uh, but today, they're already a very successful and profitable company providing these uh, prosumer drones. Um, in the, uh, the self-driving vehicle market as well, uh, we've made a couple bets. Uh, we've bet on the building blocks more so than on the full stack companies. Uh, but these building blocks you know, include things like processing, include things like radar and LIDAR sensing. And uh, we think that there's a lot of opportunity for the building blocks to enable the next generation of autonomous vehicles and autonomous systems. So we're very excited about that. And so, um, yeah, just that's a little bit about uh, you know, uh, some of the investments that we've made that we're very proud of. Um, I, I did want to save a little bit of time at the end of my talk. Um, there is another group here that uh, you know, very generously sponsored this. It was uh, Park Pine Capital. And uh, Ahmed from Park Pine Capital has been a, you know, a, a, a great friend. And uh, they have some exciting announcements to make today as well. And so I'm going to let them take the stage now and uh, talk a little bit about what they're up to as well. So thank you guys.